Hello, good people of YouTube. Sea Lord here, and if you are one of the more involved and active members of the Water Worships community and communicate with other members of the community through the Discord, either the official Discord or my Discord or one of the other uh, content creators' Discords or the Facebook page if you're a boomer or through the subreddit or any other place where Water Worships players get together and discuss things, you've probably seen one or probably several dozen posts talking about how the game is dying or on its way out for one reason or the other. So I thought I would take a look at my own comment section as I do upload six World of Worships videos every single week and see what the five most common reasons given for the game dying are. Now, as you guys know, I don't believe the game is dying just yet. I do believe we've probably hit a stagnation when it comes to the player numbers, but I don't believe we're going to be seeing the death of the game anytime soon, especially again since what Warplanes is still active, you know. But I do think there are causes for concern, and I do think this year is very important for the game. So we're going to take a look at my top five reasons why the game is dying according to the community. But speaking about those six videos a week, the seventh video for the week is a just a random video on a different topic. Sometimes it's another game, sometimes it's something IRL. And this Sunday, there was a goof up with the schedule and our proper Sunday video, the Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty DLC video where I play about the first four hours of that DLC accidentally went up on Saturday instead of Sunday and I had to reschedule it for Sunday and that screws up the whole you know notification system for YouTube so if you guys are interested in seeing you know a brief playthrough of the first three to four hours of the Phantom Liberty DLC for Cyberpunk please check out that video link will be either here or in the description down below you know why not both right and lastly before we get into the list if you guys wouldn't mind dropping a like leaving a comment or subscribe to the channel if you do find this video informational entertaining or just downright enjoy it helps on the YouTube side of things. We must appease our algorithm overlords. That is, of course, how YouTube works in the year of our Lord, 2023. But on to the list, starting with number five, and that is good old matchmaking. Man, if I had a nickel for every time, well, really, in, in any of these reasons on this list, if I had a nickel for any time, they were you know, brought up, I, I, I could retire already. But matchmaking is one that's been around for quite some time. Some of these are, of course, newer issues with the game. But matchmaking is a, shoot, we've been hearing complaints about that, I think, pretty much since I started my channel. So what are the complaints about matchmaking? I am glad you asked. Well, there's several. The most common ones are either one, it just, for some reason, will absolutely stack. One team with a bunch of, you know, 44 or 40% or below players. Other team, you got like 50% and above win rate players on that side. If you don't know what I'm talking about when I say 40% or 50%, I'm referring to win rate. A player's win rate is, of course, the percentage of battles that they've won. So those 50% win rate players, over half or at least half of the battles that they've played, they've won. Now, of course, in World of Warships, a lot of times, as I'm sure you guys have known, uh, you got to pull more than your own fair fair share of the weight, right? And those, you know, 55, 56, 57, 60% win rate players, they know how to do that. You know, they are very good players. And now that 42% win rate fella, it may not be his fault. He may be new to the game, you know, right? Like he's still learning the basics. This game takes quite some time to really, you know, get good at, right? Like I've been playing this game for six, seven years now. And, you know, I'm still getting into DDs and torpedo DDs and such. And, you know, I I'm trying to make those guys work, right? And I, again, I've been playing this game as a second job for three of those six or seven years, right? So it takes time, okay? So it's not necessarily that guy's fault. But it certainly isn't his fault that he's placed on a team of 11 other 41 to 42% win rate players. And the other side has, again, 50 or 60% win rate players. Now, you'd think that's not really supposed to happen, right? I mean, random battles is random matchmaking. So statistically, it should be random but apparently somehow this does happen quite a bit 
and there's endless posts about this. Well, there used to be a ton on the forums, of course. I think you can still view them for the next couple of weeks. But again, you can just take a peruse of the subreddit or even Facebook, and there's a mod that you can download called Matchmaking Monitor, where you can see the stats of the players if their stats aren't privated. And yes, it still happens quite a lot. Now, again, are going to Wargaming. The matchmaker does not take win rate into account at all, but for some reason, it keeps happening. The other part about matchmaking, which I think, you know, is more in Wargaming's house, because again, you know, like, it could be that it is just random, and it does just happen from time to time, with all the thousands of battles being played every, you know, two minutes in this game, it, it, it statistically could happen, you know, and just the ones that have that happen could be the ones rising to the surface in the forums and stuff but the second part there's a bit more valid of an argument to that and that is it's outdated with all these new ship classes that we're getting in games submarines hybrid cruisers hybrid destroyers even hybrid battleships and hybrid submarines there's many a case where you'll have completely unbalanced matchmaking just going off of ship type there'll be matches where one team will have a midway two Louisianas, and, you know, maybe a, a, a Tone on their side, while the other side has a Midway, and that's it for aviation. Now, of course, with those hybrid ships, they have the spotting advantage, because the hybrid ships have aircraft that they can launch, and they spot just like the CV aircraft do as well. So naturally, they're going to have more eyes on more of the battlefield and they have more information going to their team and if you guys haven't seen any of my live streams or any of the matches that i've commentated having eyes on the enemy team is crucial to you winning because you cannot shoot what one cannot see right it, that's how it works and by one side just having that much more spotting not even talking about the damage dealing capabilities of those aircraft being able to of course you know, fly over to the other side of the map and you know a handful of minutes and get damage on the enemy team directly rather than having to you know use naval artillery or torpedoes not even taking that into account you have a huge huge advantage right there and that is something that is becoming ever more prevalent as they keep introducing more and more and more of these hybrid ships into the game. Like I said, we're getting another Soviet hybrid cruiser in the future. Uh, the Russian dev blog announced a hybrid submarine, which means our dev blog may be a, you know, a couple more months away from announcing it, but given recent events, it looks like it probably is coming here somewhat soon, right? So those are the two main issues that I see in my comment section and in game when it comes to matchmaking. And I think the second one, again, that's more in Wargaming's ballpark. There's more they can do to account for that and fix that. And not even just hybrid ships, radar ships too. Sometimes it'll give one side all the radar and the other side will have no radar. So that's something that really shouldn't happen. It can't be that hard to tag a ship in like the matchmaking's, I don't know, portfolio, whatever it pulls from. To check the ships right say hey this ship has a radar this ship doesn't have a radar this ship has a radar you know right and then equally distribute those assets but we'll see what happens with that but definitely a big one there and then moving on down to number four after spending like six minutes on that topic we have of course the meta now the meta isn't something that wargaming directly controls right there's not a switch at Wargaming HQ that they can flip the meta back to mid to close range. I wish there was, but that's just not the way it works. They do, however, greatly indirectly control it, right? Through the ships they add into the game, through the game modes they add into the game, through the balancing decisions they make, that is all indirectly influencing the meta. Well, I guess that's directly influencing the meta, and Wargaming is directly influencing that, so I guess you could say they have a pretty good sway over that. But anyway, if you don't know what I mean by the meta, the meta is just the nature of gameplay, right? What is the tactic being used right now that's most widely being used at you know this tier and that tier? And I can tell you from about tier 8 on up, it is exceptionally passive. This is something that shouldn't come as a, as a surprise to anybody watching this channel on a regular basis. So much... So much so, and so much so often now at higher tier, you have matches that are stuck at like that, you know, 18 kilometer plus range for a good chunk of the match. Both sides are just sniping and playing exceptionally passive for a good chunk of the match. And then maybe for the last like five or four minutes, you might get some close in action. Now, 
this hasn't always been the case. No, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that, you know, Tier 10 was, you know, a brawl fest back in the day. It wasn't. There was, you know, this passive phase too, but it was a much shorter phase. And it seems to be, from my memory at least, and going back and looking up some of my videos from back in the day, you know, there was more of that mid-range action at higher tier. And again, naturally, you know, at Tier 10, you know, the ranges are going to be much further because it's Tier 10. The ships have longer range of their guns. But it's not sitting at the back for, you know, 15 minutes sniping from 18 plus kilometers. Now, I get why is this happening? Well, there's been a series of ships that have been introduced that have, of course, larger caliber guns at the tier. I'm not saying, you no, know, they're all 18 inch and above, but we have had a ton of 457 millimeter plus guns get introduced at higher tier. There's been a steady introduction of more and more of these machine gunning HE spammy ships. We, of course, have, well... Uh, someone that we'll get to later, you know, our new favorite class submarines that are running around now at higher tier. And of course, too, there's just been a lot more of gimmicks, super ships that have been added in that make players less uh, encouraged, shall we say, in, uh, in order to get close to the enemy ship. They're, they're not wanting to take as many risks because it's become a very risky venture at higher tier to push in before you know you have a clear advantage on the enemy team. I'm not talking about just having an advantage on the flank. I'm talking about, you know, maybe when half the enemy's team's dead, I'll want to push in now. Because with a lot of these ships that are in game now, you make one mistake and your ship is completely lost. Now, of course, there's an argument there. Well, it is high tier and, you know, you should know what you're doing. And if you goof up like that, you should lose your ship. And certainly that is an argument that could be presented. But of course, when you have those high tier heavy cruisers and those high tier battleships that, you know, are supposed to be the tanks for their team. But then you have ships in the game that can melt them down incredibly fast or, of course, outright delete them. And, you know, just a, a handful of, of seconds. It's, yeah, it's it's not that uh, great to push up in those ships, right? Now, of course, Wargaming, to their credit, has recently been trying to nudge the high tier gameplay more in a mid range ish direction with some of the changes they've made like some of the most egregious offenders of the whole you know insane he spam thing like the small lens have been hit on the nerf bat in the past couple of years her range got nerfed from 19 now to 16 kilometers so if you want to get that 16 kilometer range you do of course have to take the range mod and that of course slows down your reload time so it's not quite the machine gun as it used to be but it's still pretty terrifying if you run across it and like the thunderer 2 she was pretty 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 cracked right back in the day and her range was nerfed as well and of course we've had airship escort get introduced into random battles a game mode that's very much about mid to close range gameplay so we'll see if those efforts do pay off but again it's a very passive very stealth meta at high tier right now that's really not that great to play so moving on down to number three we have something that's certainly been on the rise in recent years, and that is the outright aggressive monetization. Now, Wargaming had the community up in an uproar over this a couple of years ago, and they agreed to back off. And keep in mind, the current situation that we have right now is them after basket backing off after the whole CC walkout and the uproar over loot boxes and loot containers, uh, I think a year or two ago. So you can imagine where we would be <laughs> if those, uh, those uprisings did not occur, shall we say. I mean, good God, guys. What was it? Uh, last patch, the last three weeks of last patch, we had like seven events going on in the armory at the same time grand they are optional events and you don't have to partake in them but it's like good god uh there's so many ships now that wargaming you know it's like the monkey's paw they 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 they, they, they stick stuck to their word in some ways but it's just like okay wargaming okay so many ships now come out in like early access and loot boxes or stuff which true you don't have to pay for them but they come out in early access and loot boxes well not really loot boxes anymore it's, it's the random bundles is there is our current thing usually and you gotta you know gamble your way through the random bundles to get the ship if you want to get it earlier than anybody else which again you don't have to do you know but still like you know come on 
and then when it does come out it's usually like a, a patch or two later in some cases six months later if you don't want to partake in whatever event they have going on at that time that, that tries to separate you from your cash so that's one way that they've been doing it another way of course as we've all seen they are absolutely trying to cut back on the amount of credits you get in game you know they nerfed the economy not that long ago we had the econ the economic rework um and they have been just try they've been trying to fight inflation according to what you know they say harder than most governments around the world right they, they want to deal with this resource inflation as they call it so yeah it, it it it's been something to say say the least right and then of course you know with oh shoot a good example recently was the uh, three kingdoms event where there's two ships that you can get completely for free in game that they straight up just copy and paste it into premium ships that they charging 36,000 doubloons for like the the the, the Aguirre and the lion I forget the, the names at the moment, but they're, you know, they're literally the same ships. Nothing has changed about them. 36,000 doubloons, pr please. Yeah. And, of course, Spawnet's coming back in the Armory for Auction for doubloons as well. So, yeah. Now, again, a bunch of this is completely, completely optional. You don't have to partake in it. And in most cases, there's, of course, a free or normally priced option to get said ship. But it's just pretty tiresome time after time with all these events being shoved into the game that keep being shoved into players faces and such so it's it's something that does of course turn a lot of players off and when they see that they're just like oh man like no i don't want to deal with this i don't want this shoved in my face and all that jazz so yeah and that's just a couple of options that i can come up with right now and again to wargaming's credit a lot of times the normally priced version of these ships are released at a later time but it's just that, you know, they're trying to play into that, that FOMO, that fear of missing out that, again, turns a lot of players off. So going on down to number two is the class that was most excited for the release of submarines, and that is CVs. So CVs, of course, provide a humongous tactical advantage to whoever's team has the better CV player. A good CV player can spot for his team absolutely murder the enemy ships right and keep the enemy cv at bay all at the same time from one ship right so cvs are a huge 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 tactical asset and a huge headache for whoever they decide to pick on in the game now i touched on what is probably the most frustrating part about cvs in the matchmaking section and that is the instant tactical spotting they can provide to their team they can of course spot whatever they want essentially with their planes if it isn't in a smoke screen or has absolutely god tier aa and there's not really a whole lot you can do about it a good seat cv player knows how far to place their spotter well i say their spotter their fighters away from the enemy ship to be just outside of his AA range, but still probably inside his spotting by air range. And, I mean, I, I just call them spotters, but they're fighters, but really in, in most cases they're used as spotters, right? But anyway, so of course there's not much you can do about that if they're placed outside of your AA range and the CV really doesn't like you, he doesn't even have to use his fighters, he can just use the planes he's controlling to spot you and just sit there and just, you know, fly circles around you. At least when they're doing that, they're not doing damage to you. But, yeah. It also became incredibly easy for CVs to do damage to your ship after the CV reworks. And CVs now directly control their planes. You know, they're playing World of War planes, but everyone else is playing World of War ships. And, of course, AA is, um, yeah, it's either you really got it, or you might as well send some dude on the deck with a pistol, right? It's either excellent, or it doesn't even bother the enemy cv at all now cvs to their credit have been a part of the game since release they were here since day one since the full release of the game they weren't added in you know halfway through the game's life or you know whatever you want to call it like a particular other class so they've been a part of the game and truth be told from an older player someone that was here before the cv rework the version of cvs that we have right now 
is much less detrimental to the game's health than the older version of CVs. Yes, the older version of CVs, they weren't in matches as, as much, but God help you if they were. Because there was absolutely zero you could do to a CV player that was determined to kill you. Especially if they were a good player. And since the gameplay of old school CVs was so much different than today's CVs, the ones you would run across 8 out of 10 times was a good CV player. Because back in the day, CVs were more of an RTS type of gameplay. It was completely different from the, again, every other class in the game. And those players were a special kind of person that liked that type of gameplay, and they were good at it. Back in the day, a single CV could literally win the, the game for his team without his team getting a single kill, and it was not uncommon. That That's just how it was back in the day, and I, I just find it funny, and I guess it is just me showing my age too, because there are players, you know, this, game, it's, this game's eight years old, right? There are players that have picked up the game since after the CV rework that probably had no clue that CVs used to be an RTS style of gameplay. And yes, it is still very frustrating. I'm not trying to downplay that. It is very frustrating when you get picked on by a CV because of the new systems that are in place. And I do think there can be some improvements to said system and Wargaming is also kind of working on that, thankfully. But as aggravating as they are today, they were worse. And I do think today, in most cases, they are better but there are a few cvs that are absolutely busted right like colossus is, is very much one that thing's stupid um the soviet tier 10 cv whose name is of course escaping me right now knock him off hey i got it this time that thing's still a little goofy and there's one or two more that you know need some adjustment and yes it is very frustrating when you are the one that sold out by the enemy cv and you know you're there and maybe another ship or two's with you and they're still getting through your aa and they're still getting full attack wings off on you that is very frustrating now thankfully wargaming has been working on a couple of changes where once planes enter the attack mode they won't be replaced with planes from the rest of the flight because that's how it works right now. Let's say there's 10 planes in a flight, but four in, a, in an attack wing. So those four planes dive on your ship. You shoot down two of them. They're replaced by two planes from the rest of the flight. And you haven't taken any damage away from the attack coming in at your ship. In this new system, if you shoot down those two planes, then only two bombs will then be released from said planes. Or two torpedoes or two sets of rockets will be released from said planes in the attacking flight. Because you shot down those two planes. I think that is a much better system and they are also working on adjustments to the spotting mechanics for cvs where fighters will essentially no longer be able to spot enemy ships so now if the cv player wants to sit there and spot you he has to give up his damage output for the duration of time he wants to sit there and manually fly his planes around your ship now, of course these were all just you know Bits of information that Wargaming has released over the past, I think, uh, six months, saying that you know we're working on it in this regards, and I do think those changes, if they do come to pass, will be a big step in helping alleviate a lot of the imbalance of this CV class as a whole. And the fact that they have been continuously left out of clan battles and cots for the past several seasons is also very much telling of their tactical advantage and tactical imbalance. So. Going on down to number one, which should of course be no surprise for anyone that has watched a video, read a, a forum post, or read a Discord post, or a subreddit post in the past year, submarines. Submarines are by far the most complained about class, or topic, or issue, whatever you want to call it with regards to the death of the game. So many players have cited submarines as the point at which they stopped playing the game, at least in my comment section and such. And um, yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's discuss these funny boats that sink themselves, shall we? So, uh, what's really funny too, I called submarines boats and people lose their minds and say they're ships. So then I call them ships in the next video, people lose their mind and tell me that they're boats. Uh, whatever the, the the funny metal floating tube in the water okay so submarines they were not planned in 
the beginning for the game. Wargaming actually came out and said that submarines were not planned. Um, and I think it's kind of funny that they actually had to come out and say that because back in the day, believe it or not, players were asking for them to be added to the game, and Wargaming said no. They you know they aren't in the, the the base design of the game. And here we are, eight years later. Look at what happened. Now, of course, the game does have to evolve to keep up and stay relevant. And you know, um, yeah, we'll talk about how that went. But anyway, so. Yeah, submarines. What are some of the most annoying things about submarines? Well, the spotting for one, they can sit at periscope depth and have a detection range of 2.1 or 2.2 kilometers, whatever it is, and sit there and spot you. That's absolutely true. They have homing torpedoes, which uh, are quite spooky and quite frustrating to dodge at times since they're, well, homing torpedoes in a World War II era game. Yeah, okay. Germans made some. They weren't that great at that time, but sure, they existed. But of course, again, very frustrating to dodge, as you do have to use damage con to clear the ping. And think back to what we were talking about with the meta, where you, of course, have to, you know, deal with HE machine gun ships now that are very good at setting you on fire. So, yeah. And, of course, we have the good old shotgun maneuver where the submarine just rolls up to you from, you know, 2.3 kilometers right, right outside of their detection range and just dumps a boatload of torpedoes into the side of your beautiful ship, and now you're sunk. And they dive and they sell away like nothing even bothered them about it. And on top of that, too, they are pretty fast for, you know, their historical counterparts. Most submarines underwater could do, like, eight knots on a good day. And these submarines underwater, they're doing 13, 14 knots. On the surface, these boys are flying at 28 and 30 plus knots on the surface. So yeah, those are again the general main complaints about them. Oh, and of course, countering them as hard as they are very stealthy. And uh, the hydro phone effect that pops up with their pings isn't really that uh, close to where the submarine is. And again, given their speed on the surface, they could very well be quite far away from that ping effect, if you will, uh, by the time your ASW aircraft do get there. But those are some of the general complaints. There's a lot more to it, but again, this is a top five video, so I don't want it to be like a 40-minute video. But anyway, so, with all of that, I definitely agree on the combination of the speed and the concealment. The fact that you as a submarine player can rock and roll at, like, your surface speed while you're submerged, sitting at two kilometer de detection, is kind of ridiculous. So, like, the Gato, for example, can rock and roll at 32 knots at periscope depth because you don't get hit with your submerged speed until you are fully submerged underneath the water. Um, that's kind of dumb. And that, of course, makes it very easy to shotgun enemy ships that you can literally walk up to at the speed of, you know, like a what a, a gearing or, a you know, an average tier 10 DD's top speed and chunk torpedoes in somebody's side from two kilometers away without ever being detected. Yeah, that's that's a little stupid from my side of things. Now, I think by itself, the speed thing isn't really a problem because if you want to know the truth about it most stuff in this game is sped up by a factor of about three you know your ship takes off much faster than it would in real life it handles a whole lot better than it would in real life right right it is a video game okay so that the submarines being a little bit faster that's fine you know your, your gun crew doesn't get tired after the 20th salvo that they've shot in the past what you know um 10 minutes people get tired in real life you know sustaining that rate of fire didn't happen in real life right so it's a game i think that can be excused by itself by itself not coupling it with the consumer again i think that's pretty dumb um and i do think the homing torpedoes they can be a little goofy at times but uh, if you play the submarines it's not quite as easy to pull off as it seems there's very much a disconnect between the submarine player and the player that's never played a submarine uh, once you've experienced it for yourself it, it very much makes it a bit more understandable where most average submarine players are are coming from and it makes it a lot easier to deal with them but what i think is very interesting is that we're seeing the exact same thing here with submarines that we saw with CVs back in the day. You have a 
very much a like top tier submarine player that can absolutely ruin an entire flank's day, right? But then a good chunk of the submarine players that you do run into, how many times you see them get spotted once and now they get dogpiled by, you know, 22 ASW aircraft, right? That is very much a very common thing. But when you get that one submarine captain that knows what he's doing, he can make your entire half of the map's life hell, right? So that's a very interesting thing that we're seeing pop up yet again with a class in this game. So there's that. Now, um... I do think that there is a pretty simple solution to the fix to, uh, to this to fix submarines, and, and that is making them more like the I-56, where it's a submarine that mostly operates at the surface. It, it really just plays like a half-sunken Shimakaze, right? It's got good reload on its torpedoes. Its high its uh, hydro hydrophone torpedoes, hydroacoustic torpedoes, work more as only for like a self-defense thing against submarines because it only has a range of six kilometers for those torpedoes and they don't do that much damage and the dummy guided torpedoes where you yourself have to you know make those estimations about where you think the enemy ship is going to be at by the time your torpedoes get there the ones that involve more skill are the high damage torpedoes couple that with the fact that the i-56 is slow it's a huge target and it's got like a two minute dive time yeah that that sounds more about right for a world war ii era submarine because war ii era submarines they weren't like submarines today where they you know fo focus on you know running underwater most of the time their main focus was they would you know uh operate at the surface and then as needed to escape detection dive underwater so having that short dive time coupled with like the backup battery you know that's more of a World War II era submarine. Now, of course, you can argue with a German submarine, especially with like the Tier 10. Yeah, those were more of like actual submarine submarines where they were meant to um, operate, you know, more dived under the surface than they operated at the surface. So that could be like the German Lines flavor, if you will, but you could balance them around that. But I do think submarines, if they can hopefully get them com correctly balanced, which I think they're pretty close. Get rid of the stupid ability to run at top speed at periscope depth um, and maybe give the homing torpedoes a little whack with the nerf bat and maybe focus on using the unguided torpedoes more. That would be a more appropriate balancing measure there. And I think if you get rid of the incredible speed at periscope depth, I think you would handle the shotgunning pretty well there too because shotgunning, you still have to get close to the enemy ship. And you still have to, of course, be able to close the distance in a appropriate amount of time. So if you can't run at, you know, 30 knots at periscope depth, then you can run at, like, you know, 19 knots or 20 knots at periscope depth instead of your full speed. That, of course, you know, you have to spend more time doing it. You expend more of your dive time. And it's a lot more difficult to pull off, you know, because you think about 20 knots at, like, tier 8 plus, that's really friggin' slow. That's slow for a battleship, let alone a small ship like a submarine. So I think that is where you would start with trying to balance submarines overall. But again, this is the number one complaint I see from players that have claimed to have left the game. This is their number one reason why, and it is submarines. So let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Uh, feel free, have at it. I'm sure it's going to be a fun comment section <laughs> on this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Have a wonderful Monday. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Hope to catch you guys in the next one.